ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. If my hair looks extra floofy, it's because my son Tobu decided to style my hair before this video. So all credit to him for being the unpaid stylist to this channel. I can literally hear Ashton Tobu biting. Let them be. I'm the kind of parent who just sits back and watches. I don't interfere. How else are they going to learn? I haven't done a book haul in like two and a half months, three months, and I haven't shown you all the books that I've collected since the new year. So these are all the books that I hold from January, February, and March, and there are 60 books here. There are 60 books. I haven't included the manga because they could definitely do with their own video. And I will say as well, actually, I think the majority of these books are ones that I got from Fairy Loot or Illumicrate. So a lot of these are special editions that had been ordered in advance and decided to come during these months, making me look like some kind of hoarder. So let's just get straight into it. Otherwise we'll be here a long time. So let's get into, I think I'm gonna do this middle grade and then young adult and adult last, which is I think what I did in the last one. Then again, I was on a vibration plate, so I can't quite remember what I said during that video or, or how I structured it. So this is actually like just a normal, regular book haul. So firstly, I have Hookie Volume 2 by Miriam Bonastri Tur. This was kindly gifted to me from Stefana, so thank you so much for sending me this. I don't know if you can hear them fine. You guys, look Tobu, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Mm -hmm. This series used to be a webtoon and it follows a brother and sister who go on these magical adventures, they cross kingdoms. It's all colour illustrations, so it's absolutely stunning and I'm looking forward to giving this one a read. A huge thank you to Claire's Creative Corner for sending me these two books. We have The Hidden Witch and The Midwinter Witch by Molly Knox Ostertag and these are the second and third book in the Witch's Boy series. I really enjoyed the first book. It's been a while since I read it, but it is again a graphic novel series. It's mainly set in a world where only girls become witches witches but the main character is a boy and he wants to become a witch so he secretly learns how to be a witch. There was something about a creature in the first book as well. Yeah I'll definitely going to reread it before I dive into these two but thank you so much Claire for sending me these. Then I picked up a finished copy of Villains Academy by Ryan Hammond and I got the Waterstones Sprayed Edge which is looking so good. I absolutely adore the way that this looks. And this follows a werewolf called Bram and he is in Villains Academy and they have to sort of prove themselves to be the baddest at this academy, I think. And they need to be named Villain of the Week. Filled with incredible spooky illustrations, very reminiscent of like Amelia Fang, I would probably say. And it looks like an absolute treat. So very young middle grade. I would probably say this is more like children's than middle grade, but it looks so good nonetheless. Oh my god, you boys. Boys, do I have to come out there? Well, speaking of Amelia Fang, the author released the third and final book in the Rainbow Grey series, Rainbow Grey Battle for the Skies. And again, I got the Waterstones Sprayed Edge like I did with the first two books. But yeah, this is the third and final book in the Rainbow Grey series, which I'm so sad about. But it does follow Ray Grey. She was born without magic, but she ends up coming across ancient rainbow magic and she gets imbued with it. And the first, second and third books just follow her adventures. And they've been so fantastic, so good. I absolutely adore it. And I am a character that returns for this book too. There I am, Gusty Gav. <laughs> I also picked up Like a Curse by Elle McNichol. This is the sequel to Like a Charm. Oh, like I think Like a Charm was my favourite middle grade of 2022. And I saw this in store and I just had to buy it. It just, uh, it's a duology, I believe. It's just a duology. But yeah, we follow Ramya, who is dyspraxic and she is able to see things that other people cannot see. And she goes to Edinburgh, she can see things come to life. And she's also been left a warning to beware the sirens. And this book will most likely continue the adventure and the mystery that was set in the first book. So I'm really excited to give this one a read. I actually have a 48 hour page Patreon readathon with Lexi coming up this weekend actually, which is middle grade based. So I might end up reading this for that readathon. I just love Elle McNichols' book so much. Huge thank you to the publisher for sending me Yesterday Crumb and the Teapot of Chaos by Andy Sager. This is the second book in the Yesterday Crumb series. The first book was Yesterday Crumb and the. Oh. I know it. A storm in a teacup? Yes, I was right. I knew it. I do know my middle grade. But I do know that this follows Yesterday Crumb. She has fox ears and she ends up coming across Mrs. Dumpling's tea shop and becomes a sort of apprentice to her. And this is the newly released sequel. Another huge thank you to the publisher for sending me Night Spark by Michael Mann. This is the sequel to Ghost Cloud. At least I believe it's a sequel. It is a Ghost Cloud novel. So it could be either a prequel. It could just be one book set in that world. I don't know yet. But the first book came out in hardback. This one seems to be only out in paperback, so 
Oh, yeah, actually it is a sequel. So this is the first book and I'm just a little bit sad about this. The first book was about a boy who can see ghosts and he discovers Ulmer, who is a ghost. And he is also in some kind of power station, shoveling things. <laughs> and he ends up having to try to escape. So I believe Night Spark just continues on from that story. Another huge thank you to the publisher for sending me Just Like Everyone Else by Sarah Hager Holt. This one comes out in June and it's an LGBTQ plus middle grade. This follows a boy called Aiden and his mother is pregnant. However, she's not having her own baby. She's been a surrogate for a gay couple. The main character Aiden is also struggling with the idea that he might be gay. So I think this will just be a really great exploration into all of that. So I'm really excited to read this actually. Sarah Hager Holt wrote Proud of Me and it's a fantastic LGBTQ plus middle grade. So ready to add an Another one to the ranks. I am so excited to have Angie Thomas's middle grade debut, Nick Blake and the Remarkables, the Manifesta, Manifesta? Manifesta Prophecy? <laughs> That's actually kind of hard to say. And I've been a fan of Angie Thomas since The Hate You Give, so I'm really excited that she is trying her hand at middle grade. The summary for this is very vague, but it does follow Nick Blake. She has the power of being a Manifesta and she needs to be a lot more powerful and find this really secret weapon in order to save her father, I believe. But this comes out in April, so I think by the time this video comes up, it might already be out, so yay. Oh, it says on the back as well, it's a fast-paced and witty fantasy trilogy inspired by African-American history and folklore. You know what, this might end up getting read this weekend as well. I'm really slowly starting to get back into my middle grade. It's been a journey, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Another great, oh my god, I can't, boys, boys, you need to stop being so loud. I received two more exciting knocks. The first one is The Thief of Farrowfall. Farrowfell? Oh my god, why can't I say these middle grade book titles? I'm losing my power. So The Thief of Farrowfell by Ravina Garon. And this one, I, I mean, one, I love the sort of concept art of the arc there. I think it looks so mysterious and rather magical. This one follows Jude and she belongs to a family of magic stealing masterminds. And Jude decides that she's gonna show her family what she can do and steal the most powerful of magic from the most powerful of houses. So I'm guessing it's not gonna be as easy as she thinks. Apparently this one comes out on the 4th of May, 2023. Oh God, I am dying to read this one. I might read this one this weekend as well. Oh my gosh, how many hours is in a weekend? again. But I have the very exciting In the Shadow of the Wolf Queen by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Oh my god, I love Kieran Millwood Hargrave so much. Now this one doesn't come out until August, so there's still a little bit more time for me to digest this one before it comes out, but I love this. I love how they've gone all out for this arc. It looks so beautiful. Oh my god, it's an exclusive early proof. Three out of 90. This is the third exclusive early proof. Oh my god, I need to read it, like right now. I need to read it right now. So this one follows Solda and she lives in the forest under the tyrannical rule of the Wolf Queen. She's never felt threatened by her, but then this earthquake happens that really shakes up the foundations of her world. And I think it's what is the catalyst to Solda getting away from her home, the safety of her home. Solda's sister ends up vanishing. So Solda has to approach the Wolf Queen for a bargain. So it sounds a little bit I don't know actually, it sounds like a few things amalgamated together, but it sounds so exciting nonetheless. I can't wait to read it. Thank you so much again to Claire's Creative Corner for sending me Charlotte's Web by A.B. White. This is the Puffin Cloth Bound Edition, and these editions I've been collecting for a long time. I think there are more out now, but I'm just like slowly getting them now. But Charlotte's Web, I read this for the very first Believeathon back in 2019, and I enjoyed it. I liked it. I don't often like a whole lot of children's classics, but I think Charlotte's Web. I thought it was very effective and I did like it a lot. But yeah, we do have a pick called Wilbur and we have a spider called Charlotte and it's about them, essentially. <laughs> you guys will know what Charlotte's Web's about, but I do love this edition so, so much. And I just want to keep collecting these puffin cloth bound editions because, oh, I love them so much. So thank you, Claire, for sending me it. Claire actually sent me two more books. So Claire, thank you so much. You've spoiled me rotten. The next one is Empty Smiles by Catherine Arden. This, I think, is the final book. Oh yeah, it says on the top, book four of the Small Spaces Quartet. So yes, this is the fourth and final book. And the Small Spaces series, it's really just been... Well, each book has been kind of random, I'm not gonna lie, each book's been quite random. This one has a clown in it. Yeah, we still follow Ollie and her friends. Uh, book three ended on a bit of a cliffhanger, so it'll be nice to know what happens next. And it apparently involves clowns. So I'm a little bit scared of that because you know me, I, I'm kind of scared of clowns. <laughs> and this cover is actually kind of freaky, not gonna lie. It's probably the freakiest middle grade cover I've ever seen. And I really, really want to go to the clown motel and read this there, as well as some other clown books that I have. 
But guys, that's expensive and I won't be able to get there because you'd have to drive and I can't drive. But just know that I've been thinking about that. And finally for the middle grades and the last gift from Claire. Thank you again, Claire. But that is the Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. This is the American edition of it. I have been collecting the American editions of Sophie Anderson's books because Sophie Anderson is like my favourite middle grade author. I love her storytelling so, so much. And I've been collecting all of the US editions as they've been coming out. So mainly because these covers are absolutely gorgeous. They are clay. I believe they're clay. It's what they use for like stop motion films like Coraline and Kubo and the Two Strings. So it's kind of like in that same kind of style. I can't remember what that style is called. I know it's Studio Like Her. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of style. But yeah, I think The Castle Tangled Magic might be my favourite Sophie Anderson book. It follows Olia who lives in Castle Mila, which is her family home. And there are like secrets hidden within and a whole secret world when you go through the attic. In Castle Mila is under threat. So Olia goes on this incredible adventure to save her family home. Oh, just so brilliant. So great. Please check this out because I love Sophie Anderson's books so, so much. Right, let's get into the YA and adult books. So firstly, this actually came today and kind of prompted me to do this book haul video. And that is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, illustrated by Howard Lyon. Now, the illustrations in this are stunning. I won't show too much because, you know, I'll show the first illustration. So there we go. And I actually don't even really know what this is about. I backed the Kickstarter campaign. So this is one of the perks of backing that Kickstarter. You get like hardback editions of the secret projects. And this was secret project number one. But I do believe that this is a sort of Princess Bride inspired story. And I love the Princess Bride so, so much. And I'm really excited to read this one. I've heard really good things about this. I believe this is a Cosmere novel, but it's a standalone, so you can read it on its own if you want to. And that's good because I haven't read any Cosmere. But it looks so fantastic. I just love, love the illustrations. I love this style of it. I just think that this is going to be such a magical and endearing book. So I'm really happy to have this one. And I've still got the Greatest Showman stuck in my head. I, I want you guys to meet my stylist. Come on, talk to Come on. Oh, hello, Ash. Okay, this isn't the stylist, but here's Ash. Mwah. Oh, am I showing you up? Am I embarrassing you on the camera? I'm so sorry. Torbo, everyone wants to see who did my hair. Okay, Torbo is being very shy. <laughs> Next, I have The X Hex by Erin Sterling. I hold this in the drunk video I did, but this is the Fairy Loot edition of it. So I really, really did want the Fairy Loot edition of it. It's hardback, it's got a really nice sprayed edge. And I will be showing you all of the spread edges because I have so many special editions in this haul. I believe this one follows Vivian who is a witch and she puts a hex on her ex. Boom. Oh, the next one I'm dying to read because of all the praise it's been given. And also a few people I follow and a few of my friends who don't typically read this kind of thing read it and really enjoyed it. And that's Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Gormis. And again, this is the I think the Waterstones exclusive. I think it's exclusive to Waterstones, I don't know. But it does have like the sort of periodic table, sprayed edge there, stenciled edge. And the fact that this was like, what book of the year for Waterstones and Barnes and Noble, I believe. This one follows a chemist and I believe she ends up starring in a cooking show. <laughs> Which really doesn't give you a whole lot to work with. The book I got from Fairy Loot is The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This has a really nice sprayed edge. Very pretty. And it actually goes all the way around. So it's not just on the side, it's actually all around. All I know about this one is that we follow someone called Lo, who when she was younger escaped from a cult from some catacombs. And throughout her life, her sort of mantra has been, don't let them find you. So like she's kind of been running from them her entire life. I don't know, I think maybe one day they catch up to her. It sounds fantastic. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it sounds good. This one I believe is also Fairy Loot and that is City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaefer. And this one follows Ness and I believe maybe a good few years back her sister got transformed by a nightmare into a man-eaten spider and slaughtered their way through town. And ever since that moment Ness has been terrified that a nightmare would I think inhabit her. I don't know how the nightmares work in this world but doesn't that just sound so fascinating? But also the idea that your own sibling could be transformed into a man-eaten spider. Oh, chills. I believe Ness joined some kind of cult to fight against the nightmares. So yet again, we have another cult appearing in these books. We see a theme. I had these ordered as soon as they were available and those are The Priory of the Orange Tree and A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon, the Illumicrate editions. They are just absolutely stunning. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, amazing, show-stopping. You know what, I try and quote things but I can't because I'm distracted. 
by two very naughty boys. <laughs> oh, they're not naughty, they're just plain. When did I read this? I think I read this in 2020. And I'm not gonna lie, three years later, I cannot remember what happened in it or what it was about. I feel like the majority of what I read in 2020 should just be discounted because it was a year. It was a year. And just thinking of that whole year in terms of reading, I think the majority of what I read that year I have forgotten about since then. It's just, yeah, it's, it's funny that, isn't it? So I will definitely reread Prior to the Orange Tree before diving into the prequel, A Day of Falling Night, which I am really excited for. I am, because I remember really liking this. I believe I gave it four stars when I read it. So I just need to reread these, refresh my memory on them, and just love them again. Another fairy loop book is The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Oh, guys, seriously. Like, have you ever seen more gorgeous books, but not just that? Oh my god, I love this. The end papers with this beautiful map. <gasps> this one, I believe, follows Amina, who is a retired bandit, but she is given the opportunity to reunite with her crew for one last adventure. And it just looks so piratey, and because I've been reading and loving One Piece right now, I just think that this will be the perfect companion novel to reading it. Ugh, oh, I just love anything pirate related right now, I'm not gonna lie. Speaking of pirate related, I did get the fabulous editions of Daughter of the Pirate King. Did you hear that? Literally, I'm, I'm doing a dramatic reveal. I'm doing a dramatic reveal, Tobu. Can I, can I show you on the camera now? Can I show you on the camera? Tobu. What's this? What's this? Everyone just wants to say hello, just say hi for two seconds. Just say hi for two seconds. Look, look, isn't that so beautiful? It's so beautiful. Okay, now go play. Okay, let's start that again. I do have the fairy editions of Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. And this is, oh no, that's wrong. This is why I bought these copies. As soon as I saw this concept artwork on Fairy Loot, I was like, pre-order. I need to get these, this is absolutely gorgeous. I just love that the spread edges just tell a story. They just tell a story. And I've been meaning to read these for the longest time. The longest time, I believe 2019 was when I had both of them on my TBR list and I just never got around to reading them. But now, oh, actually, here's a good idea. What about like some kind of like piratey related reading vlog? You know, and because I love pirates so much right now with One Piece. That's such a good idea. All I know about this one is that it follows Alosa, who is the titled Daughter of the Pirate King, and she has to find some kind of hidden treasure map. And that's all I know about it. This one, I think is a Lubricate. God Killer by Hannah Kane. And I did, oh, you know what? I had the Waterstones edition pre-ordered, but then there was some kind of error and it meant that I never got a chance to get it because then the edition sold out and I just never received a copy. So this is definitely making up for it. Sprayed Edge, absolutely beautiful Sprayed Edge right there. And you know what? I, I prefer this over the Waterstones edition any day. So this one follows Kissin and her entire family was wiped out by gods and now it is her mission to kill gods except she comes across a god she cannot kill. Heard fantastic things about this one. It needs to be read ASAP if you ask me and you know what it doesn't actually look that thick. It doesn't look too much of a chore to get through so excited. But the next book is also fairy loot <laughs> and that is Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Emily Wenzhou. This one might actually be the Patreon book club pick for my Patreon book club in June and July for the YA and Adult Book Club. I currently have a poll going for my patrons and this one is currently winning, I believe, or might be joined with something else. But it looks like this one might be the one that gets read. But Sprayed Edge, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Sprayed Edge. Oh wait, hang on, this is a Luma Crate. That's embarrassing, okay. This one follows Lan and in a fallen kingdom, her mother has perished, but she did leave behind a burn mark or something on her that she is now trying to uncover the secret of. Lan meets a practitioner called Zen and I think they go on an adventure. Yay, adult fantasy or YA fantasy. I actually don't know. This one's fairy loot. This one's definitely fairy loot. Okay, so the next one is Spice Road by Mia Ibrahim and <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. This is just literally a sprayed edge video. I can't believe how many gorgeous books came out with gorgeous sprayed edges in 2023 so far. Just insane. It's madness. What are you doing? You might not be hurting him. This one is set in a desert city where if anybody drinks this magic tea, they end up displaying powers or have their affinity towards something. So like say Amina, our main character, she has an affinity towards iron so she can wield a dagger like no other. She has lost her brother because in every single YA or adult fantasy, someone has a dead sibling or parent or somebody who has a missing parent or sibling that they need to save. And this is 
pretty much like that too. But I'm still excited to read it. It's really big. It's actually really big. Haven't really heard anyone review this one just yet, I don't think. Next, I have Cruel Illusions by Margie Fuston. This one is definitely also fairy loot and it does have beautiful, beautiful spread edge all around. So this one follows Ava and ever since her mother was murdered by a vampire, Ava has been hunting them down. However, she hasn't been able to find any of them until she comes across this sort of magic show where these impossible illusions are happening. And she doesn't think the person doing it is a vampire, but she does think that she will now be able to find vampires through this person. So I do love me a good vampire story. And I think this was fairly new adult. So I believe this is an adult book and not YA. So it might, satisfy my vampire bloodlust. Definitely fairy loot as well. We have The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chokshi. <laughs> Obligatory sprayed edge appreciation time. <laughs> so I don't wholly know what this one's about. I don't know we follow Indigo who marries someone and she's holding these kind of magical secrets from him. Something about a missing childhood friend or a, a dead childhood friend who appears. And it's just all very intriguing, very alluring. And I love Roshni Chokshi. I think she's a fantastic author and looking forward to reading this one. I've heard good things. I've heard good things. I also managed to get the favorite edition of Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. So it has this. I did have the first, well, I do have the first book of this Daughter of the Moon Goddess in the Fairy Loot edition so I'm really happy I managed to snag this one but yeah this is a sequel to Daughter of the Moon Goddess so I don't want to talk too much about this one it is a sequel it looks so good it looks amazing can't wait <laughs> next I believe this was a pre-order from Waterstones and that is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes so yeah as you can see why I had pre-ordered it <laughs> it does have a beautiful spinach but also the fact that this does sound pretty interesting so in this one we follow Anne and she ends up going to New York City where she ends up getting sent to the Met Gothic Museum she meets three very interesting researchers at this museum but she also stumbles across these I think 15th century tarot cards that I think are very highly sought after and have been missing for a long, long time. If death was in the cards, would you want to know? Like, that sounds so good. Like, what a great tagline. I did also manage to get the Inheritance Games set from Fairy Loot by Jennifer Lynn Bonds. I don't know if this trilogy has an actual proper name, but they are the Fairy Loot editions and I haven't yet read these. I do want to read all of them in one go at some point. I've heard fantastic things about the first book at least. The first book sounds so good and it is absolutely gorgeous on the inside like under the dust jacket. Also the second book and the third book. Absolutely stunning. This one is a YA mystery series and we follow Avery. This billionaire dies and she has no idea who he is but he has left her his entire fortune. So there's that whole mystery surrounding that. There's mostly going to be action, maybe some kind of thriller-esque elements to it too but I was just looking for all three of them to be out so that I can just binge it all in one go. Okay these seven books I actually hold in my Gavin in Paris video so if you haven't checked that video out do check it out. I do talk about these a bit more so I don't really want to bang on about them again. But I did pick up these seven books while I was in Paris. I have the Bronte Sisters Selected Works because I'm doing a vlog on them this summer. I have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Paris Library by Janet Skelsey and Charles. Ghost Eaters by, I literally just read this one. Clay McCloy Chapman, I knew it, I knew it. Lemon by Kwon Yeoson. Graham Greene's Brighton Rock and The Italian by Anne Radcliffe, my favourite gothic classic of all time. So I did pick these up in Paris, so I did haul them in that video, but just so I mentioned them here too. These next three books you guys will have seen other books in this series from previous book hauls because I've been trying to collect them all. I only have four more left to get in one of them. Honestly, I'm starting to doubt whether it exists or not because it's impossible to find. And I really need the last one because I want to do a complete series reading vlog for it in October or September, depending on what I do. But that's the Are You Afraid of the Dark books. No, actually there's five. There's five more that I need, but one of them, one of them is impossible to find. I cannot count. But I did manage to pick up the sixth, ninth and tenth book in the Are You Afraid of the Dark series. So I have The Tale of the Phantom School Bus, The Tale of the Virtual Nightmare, as well as The Tale of the Curious Cat. So if anybody has any Are You Afraid of the Dark books they want to get rid of that I don't already own, then I will happily pay for them. But yeah, there's five more left to get. Four of them are very expensive online. And the fifth one, just absolutely no one at all is selling it online. Just absolutely no one. So yeah, it's gonna be a hard one to get. So will I end up getting all of them in time for the vlog? Gonna have to wait to find out. But Are You Afraid of the Dark is a sort of 
teen, like I would say like very young teen series because I used to love watching it when I was a kid. And it was usually about the Midnight Society. They would meet up and tell each other ghost stories or like some other kind of spooky stories around a campfire. And I'm just so excited to read this book series so much. So I just need five more and then I'll have them all and I'll be able to do my complete series reading vlog on it. Speaking of another complete series reading vlog, I have the entire Secret Circle series. I got all of these secondhand off eBay and after the success of my Vampire Diaries video, I thought, you know what, I'll just do the Secret Circle one as well because I did mention it in my vlog. I was kind of like, hmm, should I? Should I actually read them? I wasn't sure, but because a lot of people have asked for it, it's coming. It will come. I'm not sure when, but it will come. I have all seven books in the Secret Circle series. So there's The Initiation, The Captive Part 1, The Captive Part 2, The Power, The Divide, The Hunt, and The Temptation. So at least it's not as long as the Vampire Diary series. And these are all by L.J. Smith. I'm not 100% sure if some of these were ghost written, like some of the Vampire Diaries books were, but... I'm interested, I'm very intrigued, I'm going to go into this with an open mind because this one does follow witches and witches are some of my favourite kind of mythical creatures ever. But also I used to love the CW TV show as well. It only lasted one season but I really enjoyed it and I was so sad when it was cancelled. So it'll be so cool to see how similar or different the TV show was to the original books. A book that came today gifted to me from Holly Ann, so thank you so much Holly for sending me this book. Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton. For a second I was like, I can't remember this book, but then I do because I'm pretty sure this is the book where on Twitter there was some kind of fan art that was made or commissioned or something, but it was of two people having sex on a boat and the guy has the girl's head in the water and there's like sharks in the water and stuff. It sounds really insane. I believe, is it some kind of romance? Just from that image alone, I was like super intrigued. I was like, is this the next Den of Vipers for me? And I've stayed clear from reviews. I have no idea what people actually think of this book. But as soon as I saw it making its rounds on Twitter, I was like, oh yeah, I need to read that. So the main character, I don't know her name because the back does not say, but she runs into a guy called Enzo after she runs away from home. She was so desperate to escape that she only had the clothes on her back and the socks on her feet. So something happened. She runs into this guy called Enzo. She's a girl seeking refuge in a decrepit lighthouse with a man who loathes me. Wait, how he loathes her? As much as he craves me, he wants to hurt me. But the old caretaker of the abandoned island may have intentions far more sinister. It's no longer a question of who I am, but rather will I survive? Okay. Okay. Okay, that summary is a little bit new to me. I really just went off the stuff that was happening on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Interesting stuff. I cannot wait to read this actually. I think this will be a really good one to dissect. But honestly, thank you so much Holly Ann for sending me this. This is gonna be so interesting. Next is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers. This one I believe was the Waterstones book of the month a little bit earlier on this year. This one follows Cleo and I believe she meets a ma man? She meets a man. She meets a man who is gonna be able to help her give her a green card and they hastily have to marry. But I've heard stellar reviews for this and I do want to read more books like this. So I picked it up, I think it looks really interesting. I had my pre-order for Heartstopper Volume 1, The Waterstones Edition by Alice Osman arrive. I had all of them pre-ordered as soon as they were announced. Volume 1, 2, 3 and 4, pre-ordered, done, boom. So this is The Waterstones Edition of Volume 1. It is a hardback and apparently it has an exclusive mini comic inside. So, you know, when there's more Heartstopper content to consume, you know I'm gonna do that. Heartstopper is one of my favorite things ever. Like I absolutely love the graphic novel series. I love the TV show. I cannot wait for season two. And I love the story of Nick and Charlie. It's just so fantastic. I absolutely, absolutely bloody adore this. And I have nothing else to say about it because I've talked about Heartstopper to death on my channel. But speaking of Heartstopper, I did manage to get Heartstopper volume three, which is the Fairy Loot edition. And <laughs> guys, am I crazy? Am I obsessed? <laughs> I think I'm a little bit obsessed. I think there was some kind of printing errors with this though. So I don't know what they're doing about that. I mean, I found one just there. The, the page didn't finish printing. But still really nice to have regardless. And ugh, I need to stop giving Alice Osman money, but I kind of don't want to. I want to give Alice Osman everything I have. Next, I have Grady Hendrix, How to Sell a Haunted House. This is the next book I'm actually going to be reading. Like as soon as I click stop record, I'm gonna pick this one up and start reading because I need to read this for Gabby's booktube live show this weekend with Lexi. So excited. 
I will say I haven't loved Grady Hendrix in a while and I'm going to read this and if I don't love it then I'm never reading Grady Hendrix again. So we're going to see how we get on but How to Sell a Haunted House does have a really interesting premise that I'm really looking forward to reading. So it's not like I'm just going to read it because I haven't been liking his books. I actually am interested in the concept. This one follows a woman called Louise whose parents have died and she has the dreaded task of returning home in order to sell it. However the house as judged by the title, is Haunted. I'm sure I'm gonna like this one more than I did the Final Girl support group. I'm sure it's better, right? Right? I picked up Octavia A. Butler's Kindred, which I have had my eye on for a while, but it was actually Beth from Books Nest who really like pushed me into actually getting this one. I have to read the back of this one because I cannot quite wrap my head around the concept. It sounds like there's some kind of like time stuff involved, but it says, in 1976, Dana dreams of being a writer. In 1815, she is assumed a slave. When Dana first meets Rufus on a Maryland plantation, he's drowning. She saves his life and it will happen again and again. Neither of them understands his power to summon her whenever his life is threatened, nor the significance of the ties that bind them. And each time Dana saves him, the more aware she is of her own life might be over before it's even begun. So it does sound like it has some kind of time travel-y kind of stuff or something like that. I, I have no idea. I picked up She Would Be King by Wea Tu Moa because of Jesse from Jesse on YouTube. So this one is set in a West African village and we follow Lei who was cursed with immortality at birth. We also follow June who works on a plantation in Virginia and he has incredible strength. And I believe both of these characters become drawn together somehow. So really excited to read it. The writing style is already fantastic. I've already started this. Oh, chef's kiss. But this is one of Jesse's favorites and Jesse can do no wrong. I also picked up The Book of the Most Precious Substance by Sarah Gran. This was a recommendation by Kayla from Books and Lala who read this a little while ago but I love the author Sarah Gran. I read Come Closer and really enjoyed it so I don't know why I didn't pick this up sooner. It really went under the radar for me until Kayla read it. All I know about this one is that it follows Lily and she goes on this sort of trip to hunt down the book of the most precious substance which is said to be the most powerful occult book ever to exist and she really needs to find it. I believe this also has some kind of like sex magic in it too. So I'm just like, okay, okay. You had me at sex. No doubt this will be weird AF if Kayla likes it. So I believe I will most likely like it too. The final two books then. Honestly, looking at both of these together pains me to no end, but it is the second and third book in the Finley Donovan series by El Cosimano. Finley Donovan knocks him dead and Finley Donovan jumps the gun. Like why? 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 Why did I get a huge version of the third book and a normal size version of the second book? I don't get it. I've already read both of these. I read this for the Literary Dead Book Club, which speaking of, this is what I've been drinking out this entire video. In fact, actually, I think the coffee's cold now. So I have read both of these. I believe I gave the second book three stars or three and a half stars and the third book two stars. I wasn't the biggest fan of the third book. I haven't been liking the direction of the series. I really love the first book. I gave it five stars. I thought it was fantastic. We're on a turn with Spiral. I believe it's just been announced that there's going to be maybe seven books in the series and I don't know if I'm actually going to continue. If there was only going to be one more, I would definitely check it out to finish off the quartet. But I think having seven or more is like too much, I think. We've kind of stretched the initial premise thin and I think the charm of the first book was the premise and now it's just getting a bit too overdone. So I think I might end up calling the series quits and I may end up unhauling this. Like this is a book haul and I'm already thinking of unhauling this. One, because I freaking don't like the fact that this is huge compared to my other Finley Donovan books. And two, I gave it two stars. So it's like, it doesn't really belong on my shelves. I'm debating whether or not to read the fourth book. The fourth book could either make or break me reading the entire series, I guess. I don't know. But oh gosh, it's just so sad because I love the first book so much. But yes, thank you me for getting me these books. <laughs> and there we have it. Those were the 60 books I hold in the last three months. Not including the manga because I do think I'm going to do a separate manga video. So that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Let me know if you've read any of the books I hold today. What have you hold in the past couple of months that you're excited to read? Let me know everything. Let's chat down below. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons and my One Piece channel members. If you'd like to try my Patreon or my channel membership then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye!